Hello, and thanks for taking the time to watch this training video. In this video, we'll be looking at Kingdom's Log to Volume tool, which provides you with next generation depth conversion and general purpose property spreading. Log to Volume is a new Kingdom module in 2023 Service Pack 1. It's available for VELPAC and Kingdom Seismic Inversion users. So if you want to have access to it, you simply need to subscribe to one of those modules. Log to Volume uses the current TKS project and generates highly detailed volumes from a background velocity model, well velocity logs, and geological interpretation. Well log velocities are propagated in a volume consistent with geological and interval velocity constraints, tying the volume to well logs. It produces a sophisticated, high definition volume that can be used for depth conversion, in addition to attribute analysis, reservoir characterization studies, and input for seismic inversion packages. The easy to use wizard guides you through the process to quickly generate all the volumes and grids that you could possibly want. Log to volume will create a geologically consistent model. Here you can see an example of the same profile with the geological behavior of the middle layer having been changed within log to volume. The geological behavior of each layer is defined by assigning each layer one of three spread types. Cut from top, as you can see as, as the top image on the right hand side, cut from base, the middle image, or stretch and squeeze, the bottom image. When the process is run, the layers are flattened onto a datum, processed, and then returned to the original layer structure. In the cut from top image, the layers remain parallel to the base, but cut at the top. Here, the red velocity is drawn down to be parallel to the base of the layer. In the middle image, cut from base, the layers remain parallel to the top, but are cut at the bottom. Here, the red velocity remains parallel to the top of the layer. The bottom image, stretch and squeeze. Here, you can see a well being squeezed or stretched to fill the layer horizon, regardless of the width of the layer. The red velocity is then stretched where the layer goes thick, or squeezed where the layer goes thin. As you can see from these examples, the volumes produced can look very different depending on which spread type you choose. Note that it is you, the user, who is expected to have the geological knowledge of the area in order to make the correct selection of the cut type. You can also perform depth conversion in log to volume. The depth conversion part of log to volume produces corrected velocity volumes, depth grids, and other associated grids. It can also depth convert existing volumes and convert existing volumes between time and depth, interval and average velocity. The software also permits you to view any of the data you have created, as well as post information on the maps for each of the layers. This is all selected in the model tree and uses a tick box operation to select the visible layers and the data you want to display. When you've completed the operation, using the right grids button, this will synchronize the relevant data with Kingdom. The program is tightly linked with Kingdom such that the data is then immediately visible in the Kingdom tree. Volume creation in log to volume is the final step in the process. This process will take a volume in the time domain and use a velocity volume to convert the volume to the depth domain. For example, an amplitude volume in the time domain could be converted to an amplitude volume in the depth domain. These will have already been loaded back into Kingdom and come back out to populate this list. When this volume has been processed, you will then be able to access it in Kingdom as the seismic volume in the depth domain. In the image below, you can see that we've used the overlay to display the velocity volume over the seismic, which is a robust depth conversion which ties the wells at all locations. You can also see that the velocities within the layers encompass the geological complexity of the data, thus ensuring a very reliable result and also handling anisotropy for improved depth conversion accuracy. We'll now go into the software demonstration, which will feature as the main part of this video. We start the process with log to volume in Kingdom, and here we're using the E13 dataset. Now, when you're looking at the, the Kingdom tree, you'll see that you have a number of grids that are selected as your time grids. You'll also want the formation tops active and your wells, etc. Now, the key 
part of the software that is the most important thing to do before you begin is to click on File, Save Current Project. And you can then click Cancel. That is the button and the function which will align log to volume and kingdom as to what the active data is. Once that's been completed, there are a number of different ways you can access log to volume. You can select it in Geophysics, as the icon here contained within the depth conversion set. You can click on the logs within the tools, or from the main menu, from the More button and the bottom option, Log to Volume. So selecting any of those will load the software, like so. Once the software is open, the first thing that we can look at is a new project. So within here, we'll do new project and we'll call the project E13, for example. Now, this selection is going to access the kingdom tree and access all data, the visible data, which this visible data links to the, uh, the file save project option or uh, the different borehole subsets. So we'll select the visible data and work through. You then have the ability to load data or update data with the tick box functionality here against the different data types available in Kingdom. So here with everything active, we'll just move through the software. Now, once the program has created that model, there are a number of different options along the top of the menu here that can be selected for us to work through. Now, as discussed in the introduction to, to this software package, log to volume is a general purpose log spreader. And as such, you can use it for inputs to seismic inversion by creating volumes from, for example, the shear or density that would be useful inputs for that process. This video specifically is going to focus on depth conversion as the primary aspect of, of what we'll be looking at today. And we're going to step through the framework, log to volume and depth conversion tabs accordingly. Here in the framework, You'll see that the software has these help pages, uh, which are available from the side flyout and within the middle section that will enable you to get help right at hand if you get stuck in the process. Now from here, in a new model, I can build a, a new framework. So we'll call this framework one. You also have the option to load an existing framework within the same project that, you've, that you're working in or load a framework from dynamic depth conversion once you have completed that process and you have the relevant grids created. On this page, you're going to drag across the grids from the left-hand side to the right-hand side in order from surface to depth. This selection has been made easier because of the nomenclature in Kingdom that I've selected a number in front to define the layer. So as a, a kind of piece of good housekeeping, if you rename your surfaces in Kingdom, it can just help you very easily see that you've got the framework grids in the right order. Once you've completed this operation, you'll see that it builds the tree and contains the time grids and we're waiting for the tops now. So here you can select the surface and the corresponding top and just drag it across. And we'll complete this operation in turn for each of the layers accordingly. Now, what you'll see from the coloration of the tops is the same coloration that you see in Kingdom. So to govern what color you see here, you can use the formation top management and uh, grid management options to change the colors as you would like. Once that has been completed, we can step through the software. Now on this page, you have the ability to select a, a grid which will confirm 
the grid parameters for the project. You also have the ability to select the amplitudes and confirm the volume parameters for the project. It's important to note here the increment of the data that your amplitude volume might be in. So for example, whether it's two milliseconds or four milliseconds, that will be shown. And one important aspect of the framework building is that we want to keep consistency with the increment throughout the, the course of, of the project. So um, you can't chop and change halfway through. So here, this data is four millisecond data um, and we will continue. Now, this page is arguably one of the most important pages within the whole process, because this is where we're going to build the geological model as part of the framework. What we can see here is our seven layers. You can see the grid isochron minimum and maximum values and the different types that have been used for each layer as part of the geological model. So if you remember from the introduction, we have options here to cut from top, cut from base, or stretch and squeeze as our layer fill type. What log to volume is then going to do is split each of our layers up into a number of slices. And as you can see, the whole uh, project here will, will be made into about 1400 slices of the data to make this model. This side of the screen is really a QC element. And here you can see the number of data points based on the isochron for each of the layers. Now in this project specifically, there are a number of unconformities through the layers and you get a large number of values at, at the zero level in each of the grids because there are layers which are on lapping on top of one another. So for this, you want to ensure that you don't have any negative values as your QC, and you would typically have a dual screen setup where you could look at the seismic on one screen in Kingdom, and you could decide upon which of these options would be used for each of the layers from investigating the seismic. Now for this demonstration, I'm not going to necessarily alter any, I'll just leave them all as stretch and squeeze. When we come to this page of the framework building, this is where we're going to actually be able to QC our data as part of the framework building. Now there are a number of different options that we have here. You can see on the left hand side, there are several different drop down menus, which we'll go through in a moment. We then have the map in the middle and the triangles represent the well location. And you can see the pink dot is then uh, on the graphs for the isopack versus isochron, the interval velocity versus isochron, time versus depth, and interval velocity versus isopack. So you can have a look at the data in the different domains, both spatially and graphically, to identify any outliers. Now, should you have a data type which you thought was an outlier, for example, this data point, which we can see at the bottom on the map here, you have the ability to toggle that data on and off for a given layer. So this doesn't turn the entire well off just for this event. So when you click on toggle, it will come up with the little tip here saying use the control key and mouse button to toggle active or inactive. So here you can click on this and click control and that will turn that data point off for the first layer. So here you can then click calculate and it will then update the map accordingly, turning this data point off for layer one specifically. So as you can see, that process doesn't take too long and the map is updated accordingly. Now, the process that you would work through here would be to work through each layer in turn interacting with the data. So once you'd work through and confirmed that everything was in good order, that would be the completion of your task for this page. Now, there are a number of different options that you can also add. So for example, you can post a number of different tags to the well data, and there are a large number of options. 
but most specifically, you might want, for example, the well name. So you can click any number of these on. I'll just keep it simple for this demonstration. Click on plot and you'll see that the label gets posted like so. You also have within the wells option, the option to have the borehole surface location or the borehole label listed. Now, this is within the multi-domain option where we can have a look at things uh, graphically with this selected. If you want to, you can select the multi-event option and within here, you can select a number of different maps to be displayed simultaneously. So in doing this, we are then going to, for example, select the interval velocity domain and we can click on plot. So you can then see all seven layers simultaneously. One of the nice things about the software is that we have the ability to have a linked zoom. So you can zoom around using the mouse wheel or you can move around if you push the mouse wheel in and hold like so. So the long and short of it is that this part of the operation is to work through and QC the data such that you are happy with all of the data that's going into building the framework model. Now you can then just press the next key and move forward, or on this page, you also have the next detail button. I'll just click on this to demonstrate. On this page, you can see that there are a number of different options along the top. A number of different types have been selected for each well, and all of the data is fully visible and available to you to reference as part of your QCing uh, process. You also have the ability to output any of this data as an Excel file should you want to. Now, when you press, press next from this option, this will take you to the same page that pressing next would have done if you hadn't have selected the detail. At this point, you have the ability to select a volume name and log to volume has this option as a suggest name which is going to give a name log to volume, framework, interval velocity, and today's date that I'm recording the video on, the 12th of October, 2023. Now, if you were to create two frameworks within the same day, then this would add the second time you came round, and that would be number two. So this suggests name has a log file that it's working from to know uh, what you've done already within this project. Once you've done this, you simply press apply and that will work through and build the framework. Now within this demonstration, you can see that uh, this is a, a real time process. At the bottom here, the green bar is stepping up and is working through reasonable speed up to the point where this process has been completed. So we now have an interval velocity framework that has been created as part of the software. If we go back into Kingdom, we can click on surveys, we can right click and click on refresh survey, and we can then bring up our data. So for example, uh, a line here and if we want to we can select this framework to view the model that it has created. What you can see from this demonstration is that it has built an apparent interval velocity model which shows lateral velocity variation through the framework and no real vertical velocity component. So our framework model as as our uh, background for the log to, to volume process is a reasonable starting point. You can note here that if you were to do a full VELPAC model and have a model where you had a vertical gradient and vertical and lateral gradients within a given layer, this would be an improved starting point as a background model. So depending on your data, if you have access to VELPAC, we would recommend that the use of, uh, of a VELPAC model as a background model will provide you a, a better result. 
For the purposes of this demo, I'm not going to, to go into that, and we're just going to focus on log to volume and work through with the options that we have listed. The next aspect of the software is to click on the log to volume header up here. And this is the part of the software which is actually going to do the general purpose log spreading. And we're going to make a new log to volume model. So here we'll call this LTV01. If you're coming to the project where you've already created this, you've got the option to load the existing model with the parameters only, or load the, the mo model with the results. Because this is the first time I'm doing this, we're just going to proceed accordingly. Now at this stage, if you hadn't made a framework, you can select this and it will take you right back to where we started. In this option, we're going to use framework one that we selected earlier. The calibration options in the software are limited to the using of the time depth curves, but this should provide a reasonable job and we will be absolutely happy to, to use these uh, to continue with. Now on here, this is the screen that enables you to work with either sonic logs for making, for example, volumes which might be suitable for depth conversion or using other logs which would be useful for inputs to seismic inversion. Now in this data set, we primarily have these sonic logs and I don't have a decent set of other logs that would be useful for demonstration. So in here, if you wanted to, for example, spread shear or spread density for inputs to seismic inversion, you would have those logs available in Kingdom, select the other logs and select them within this uh, panel here. In this event, we're going to use the sonic logs. I'm going to select this set, which is my uh, despiked logs, and it comes to this screen and none of the wells are active. This is a QC really to just check that all of the data is in good order. You can check the wells one by one, or you can set all active if you're happy and you just want to proceed quickly. You can note that the software won't allow you to proceed if nothing is, is selected. So just make sure that you have the relevant data on that you want to proceed with. When we come to this option, this is where we're going to select the background volume. And if you'd built a VELPAC model, you might have a, a VELPAC output, which you could select at this stage. We, in this presentation, are going to work with our log to volume framework of interval velocity created today. Now, in the instance that you might want to create, for example, a density volume, you can choose the background as a constant. So, for example, you might set that to a value which would be appropriate for density and use that as your, your volume. So, in that instance, that would be the selection option that you would choose. But for our purposes, we're going to select the uh, background model with the tick option, like so. Now on this page, we have the ability to look at our logs and look at, at the layering. To describe the screen, we've got the display in measured depth or time. And I'll scroll down first and I'll come back to this, this filter. One of the first things that you can select is the background volume. And within here, in selecting this option, you can see the interval velocity volume that we've created in the previous step. Now, this line is perhaps a little bit too thin, so you might want to click on color and symbols and adjust the line thickness accordingly. What you'll see from this process is that you've got the ability to interact with all of the options and change their color accordingly. And you have a full color palette control so that you can choose any uh, color that you would like. You also have the option to, for example, extend the top of the log. And you'll see that this is going to create that synthetic to surface based on the last value of the volume that that you are using. Now, in looking at this, we have the ability to have a filtering by frequency. You can see that working with the, the log at the log 
level resolution will create a very, very finely detailed model. Now, there would be scenarios that you might want to create a more smooth model, which might be perhaps a little bit more geologically consistent or not, depending on the data that, that you're using. If you want to, you can simply select the frequency. For example, we can say 18 hertz, and we can filter the logs by pressing the apply button. You'll see now that we have a very nice smooth log that would be used as part of this process. Now, for this demonstration, what we're going to do instead is use the data um, at this frequency. And this is the Nyquist frequency of the data being 125 hertz for four millisecond data. If you had two millisecond data, this would be 250 hertz, etc. Now, when it comes to looking at the data here, we have the ability to QC how the, the background model is fitting the actual log curves themselves. And if you look through here, you can see that we have an issue in this well where there's something gone on here. And we would advise entirely to go back and correct the data in Kingdom if you uh, want to have a more accurate result. If you want to just do something quickly and uh, and turn this off, you can do so by clicking on the toggle layer option. So I will now click through as the tooltip said, and just click on control and click, and it will turn this gray to turn this layer off. Now it's important to note that you can step through the data and you can have a look to see if, if everything is okay. We'll turn this layer off and this one. And we'll click through the next page. Again, this well's looking okay. Again, looking reasonable, but this layer is perhaps not. So for a quick approach, turning the data off will mean that the value is going to work with the background model at this point for this layer and not try and spread potentially bad data. And this is why we would recommend that you correct the data uh, if you want to have a, a more accurate answer. So there are a number of, of different options that you, you have there. And we can just say for the sake of time that we would say that this process is complete for this data set and we'll work forward. Now at this stage, we'll come through to then generating the model. And this is then going to build the model with the roughly 1400 slices. Now, as part of the video, I'll click on generate model here, and you'll see that the time is listed on, on the video. Now, this is quite important because I'd like to reference now the CPU benchmarking that we've done to test the time that it takes. Now this CPU benchmark is based on computers that we have used as part of the development of the software. So these machines, we all actually have tested the software on and have times that are uh, appropriate. This benchmarking has been based from these uh, websites and they have a CPU mark that is proportional to what the computer settings uh, are. Now, this is an old computer that we've had for some time and the benchmark here at 6000 takes about 45 minutes to run this operation. The process that I'm actually working on now is the laptop that I have here, which is an i9 laptop with a CPU benchmark of 21,000. Now we'll see because we'll, we'll have a look at the log, how long it takes to compute this huge operation of making 1400 slices uh, in, a, in a moment. Now, more recently, we've just obtained this machine that benchmarks at 60,000. And what I can tell you in the, the process is that the entire 
speed of operation relates to the CPU value and how many cores you have available on your machine. The, the process uses uh, CPU in entirely and the more cores you have available and the higher up that you that you have on the benchmark the fastest that this process will take. So when you're thinking about log to volume and the usage of it we would highly recommend new modern computing power to make this process run in for example three minutes at this sort of quality of computer. So now that you've got that uh, discussed. I will pause the video now and pick this back up once this process is complete just to save you a few minutes of, of time. Okay so this is where we'll come back into the process where it's at 99% and as we can see when it gets to 100% there's a couple of extra things that it does as part of the processing and you can see in the messages box there that this process has taken just under 10 minutes to complete to generate that model. Now that that process has finished, you've got the option to, for example, had a look at the model value and you can tick this on. And if you zoom in to the display, you can see the model value overlaid against the logs and there will be a pretty good match depending on what filtering frequency that you used. So on here, for example, you can see that for a layer that was turned off, this is what it, it might um, have predicted given uh, the data that it, it had available. You can press next and it takes you back to this page and on here you've got the ability to output one of these six volumes as an option uh, you can output all of them sequentially if you want to and here you have the ability to handle what happens after the last layer so it could be that you use a constant value this could be zero or a value that exceeded, for example, the highest velocity. Uh, it could use a background value or you could propagate the, the last good value down. So a number of different options there. For this, you've got the log to volume model, which you can make as a de detailed model. You can create an average velocity model when you're working with sonic logs. You can output the layer numbers, which might be useful for you to create a volume of the layers for 3D visualization purposes and, and display purposes. You've got a, a scale factor model, which would output the scale factor that has been used all the way down uh, the log core for each well. There's also the geological model, so you can output the type uh, whether it was stretch and squeeze, cut from top, cut from base, etc., that you would see as part of the, the volume. And you've also got the, the slice point count that you could output uh, as part of the reporting that, that you might want to do. Now on here, I'm going to select the log to volume model and output the detailed one. So it's going to build another interval velocity volume with today's date. And on here, I can click on generate volume. Now, for this purpose, when you're building any of these models, the time that it takes is much quicker. The main aspect of processing is the generation of the geological model with all the slices that are being computed. So if we imagine that your CPU is going to speed this process up, the CPU type that you have is also going to be relevant for, for this process as to how long this takes to, to compute. And you'll see that in real time here that we should be ha having this whole volume created in under a minute. Now for the purposes of demo, I can just pause the video here and save you a few seconds of your time. Okay, so picking up, up the video again, 
here we can see the process just starting to complete and again it took just about a minute or so to do that. Now once you've completed this operation you can just exit or you can proceed to make other models accordingly. As part of the demonstration I'll just click on exit. We're then going to come back to Kingdom and we can right click on the surveys again and click on refresh survey and on here we can select our inline and from this point we can then have a look at the detail and this is the volume that's then being created with all of the log level detail contained within it as you can see like so. So this volume that we've got we can then go on to use as part of our next step. So coming back into log to volume we can now click on the depth conversion option and clicking through the software we're going to make a new depth conversion model DC01. Again you've got the option to load an existing depth conversion model if you've already created one. We've prompted again about the framework so we'll select the existing framework that we created and this page then gives us the ability to tell the software what type of volume we're dealing with. The software doesn't know automatically whether a volume is interval or average so in selecting the volume you've then got the ability to select which type you're working with. Now if you've made anything in log to volume it should have given you a suggested name to give you an IV or AV to describe whether it's interval or average. So on here we'll work through. At this stage when we come through to this page you've got two options here preview depth errors and correct depth errors. Let's start by clicking preview. Now what this process is doing is it is working through and actually depth converting each layer in turn and it is trying to tie all of the wells for all of the layers and do a depth conversion such that the first layer is depth converted which then has an impact on the second layer and these values are then amended accordingly and then as the second layer is adjusted this has a knock-on effect on the third layer and so on and as you can see it's working round and round and round trying to reduce the error at all of the well locations so that for every layer and every top in every well that we get down to a point where we have minimal error and it gives us here that the preview is complete and we can deselect if we want any errors. So here we can scrutinize the data by these, these graphs and this might then require you to have a look in Kingdom at the layer and well number perhaps on another monitor. What we can see in this project is that we have an issue here where perhaps the error associated with this well 11 in layer 4 is perhaps too much of, of an issue that we would want to turn it off. So the well name here is showing in numeric order. So we can go to well 11 layer 4 and just untick that. Once we have made our selection as part of the QC processes, then we can correct these depth errors. Now invariably it would be worth investigating the data to see if it was an issue that you could fix in Kingdom and then bring back into the volume so that you're not just turning off bad data as such. But as you can see it's working through now correcting each of the layers again doing its final pass and doing so including this being turned off for, uh, for layer 4. Again, the speed of processing is quite quick, 
through this demonstration and that will relate to your CPU that that you're using on your computer as to how fast the, uh, the these processes take. So the final step is that it then has to do a final pass and build for each line all of the processing that is it is computing. So on here, again, it's not a long operation. It'll take about a minute or so. And I'll, I'll pick up this just to save again a few more seconds on this demonstration. OK, so we're just picking this back up again having taken about a minute or so to complete this step of processing and the volume has now uh, finished in in that step once this is computed it means that we can then output a number of different grids to kingdom and in scrolling down we've got the right grids button so in here you've got the ability to do depth interval velocity average velocity isochron, isopack, error, error as a factor, and then do these options with no correction. So this corrected volume that we're, that we're going to, to make, we can select, for example, the, the depth grids to write out simply, just to save the, the kingdom tree from populating it with too many grids, then I will just write the depth grids back. So that process is, is very quick and we're able to go through to the next page. Now on here, we're then going to produce the volume and this is now going to be the corrected volume now that the layers have all been corrected through that pass process where each of the layers has been corrected so that the formation tops are matching the time grids at each point. So on here, I'll click apply. And this will then work through to, to build this volume. Now, again, I'll just pause the video here and come back in a minute or so once this is finished processing. OK, so we'll pick up the video here once this is complete. And again, you can see the time it's just taken a couple of minutes to to make that volume. Once we press exit, we can go back into Kingdom and again, right click on surveys, refresh survey, and we can select uh, an inline here. And we can then have a look at the corrected volume like so. And as you can see, there's a slight change from that process. The next thing we might want to do is come back into log to volume, go back into depth conversion and opt for the last option, convert volumes and depth convert volumes. On here again, we can select an existing framework that we've used. Now, the first page that we come to is optional. You can just press next and skip through this page without interacting with it. However, this page is a converter that enables you to change one volume type. So for example, interval velocity time into average velocity time or in any combination. And it's a, a process whereby, for example, you select the volume that you might want to work with and then as the uh, as the interval and then select the output. You can suggest a name and write a new volume. So this is a handy utility that would enable you to change the, the volumes that you might have and want to work with into the different domains as you see fit. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to untick this, not use this and just press next. Now on this page, we've got the ability to output a depth volume. So we can uh, 
suggest a name. It's just popped up to say which volume are we going to use. Now the main gotcha here is that we want to choose the volume first that we want to depth convert and that is typically the amplitude volume. So that is the selection. We are then going to select the volume that we're going to use for that depth conversion process and this would then typically be the corrected log to volume detailed interval velocity volume. So with this process, effectively, we'll multiply one with the other to get our depth. And this is the point where, again, you're specifying which is the volume type for the relevant data that you're using. So this is going to be amplitudes and give us a depth volume. And we'll create the depth volume just by pressing the, the, the option here. So again, this process isn't too onerous in terms of its processing time. You can see there the time in the window that that started at. And I'll just pause the video again and pick it back up when it's finished. OK, so as you can see, once that process is finished, it's just a couple of minutes to write that volume and we can click on exit. If we come back into Kingdom, Again, we'll refresh the survey and select a random line. So in here we have the amplitudes time volume that we have got selected. And through this process, we've just created the amplitudes depth volume. Now on here, I've made a section where I have created a random line through the wells. And in this process, I can select the depth section. And in moving this over like so, we can zoom in. And in looking at the grids, we can turn on each of the depth grids in turn. What you're now looking at then is the volume with all of the formation tops tying all of the layers throughout the survey. And this depth corrected volume is going to be highly accurate and will have done a very nice job of depth converting this data set. Now as part of the demonstration uh, it might be worth just reviewing that we have started with the amplitudes and within here we've then made the framework model. That framework of the interval velocities was then used as the background model to make our detailed model. And on from there we then created the corrected volume which was used to compute the final depth amplitude volume. Now, some of the nice things that we can do is, for example, if we go back to the time amplitudes, we could do a co-blending. We could select one of the volumes, for example, the corrected volume, select a color bar that might be appropriate. So for example, we could choose a rainbow color bar. And in selecting this option, we could then adjust the, the colors and see how those velocities have been used to depth convert the final volume. And it's really nice because you can see the anisotropy contained within the process, uh, the different velocity regimes for the given layers. So that concludes the presentation. And we'll go back to our final slide where we can say, thank you very much for watching. Please contact us if you have any questions on any of the phone numbers that you see listed there or on the email. And for now, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.